Hey guys, AL Levy here, and I'm going to unbox the Permanent Rain by The Dangerous Summer, which will be mixed by none other than Paul Levitt on Nail the Mix, April 2018. So, let's see what we've got. First of all, let me just uh, remind you guys that these uh, tracks are raw. How we get them, no plugins, nothing, as you can see. And I'll show you what's in the session. So, first of all, one tempo, 125, and it's a pretty simple session. Uh, just got 15 tracks of drums, two tracks of bass, looks like a DI, and then a, uh, an amp track. We'll check it out later. Actually, a decent amount of rhythm guitars, but from what I can tell is uh, we have a DI and a DI. So, three amped tracks per DI. And then a stereo for heavy rhythms. And quite a few lead tracks. Nice. So you can play with the layering. And pretty simple vocals, actually. Seems like uh, no doubles on lots of the main lines. Maybe some harmonies. But lots of parts are just well, what they are. And that's what's great about this session already. It's very, very simple, and I've heard this song before. Um, I'll let you hear what it sounds like unmixed, just a, a few levels balanced and a few things panned. I had to pan because there was just so many guitars and everything that it would have just sounded insane in a bad way without doing just a little bit. So as you can hear already, these tracks do sound pretty good. And while it is simple, there there are a few layers going on, and it does sound pretty huge if you've heard the actual mix. So your challenge is to take a minimal amount of tracks and to just get them to sound as big as possible. And while going for that size, not to swallow the, you know, the little textural parts and the leads and that's actually more challenging than you would think it's you know 180 per 180 opposite from uh, what we had this past month with the bring me the horizon tracks which was just layers upon layers upon layers upon layers this here your challenge is going to be to take a small amount of tracks and make them sound huge uh, without swallowing the detailed tracks so let's uh, go a little deeper let's check out these drums and looks like we have two kicks. Let's see what's going on with those. Those sound like real kicks. Yep, and you can hear the bleed. Nice. It's actually a pretty punchy kick for a natural kick. Let's check out the snare. Looks like we got three snare tracks. We got snare, snare bottom, and another track called snare. I'm not entirely sure what the bottom track is. Make sure that the phase is good to go on this. Hmm. You know, let's listen to that bottom snare track. Okay, that sounds like a sample. Let's listen to the original snare. So it's pitched up slightly from the original snare. I like that snare. I'll throw in the snare bottom as well. And I just want to flip the polarity just from just to hear what happens.
It's actually better the way it is. All right. So that snare has a nice tone to it, but I definitely think you're going to have to, you're going to have your work cut out for you as far as beefing it up if that's what you want to do. Um, looks like we've got some rack toms. Uh, looks like we have a sample and then the natural, either that or he duplicated the rack and um, cleaned it up. Let's, let's check it out. Okay, I see why he did that. Um, it, lots of times when a drummer hits a tom and there's lots of cymbals going on, you know, in the middle of a of a cymbal heavy part, it's just hard to get those tom hits to stick out. So it makes sense for why he embellished with samples right there. And nice of him to add them. Yeah, if you didn't have those samples, you would be left with this. Which is still all right. Um, but it definitely helps in this situation. We've got a lot more single tom hits. Let's just hear these drums playing. Just solo the drums. Actually, those drums sound very, very nice. Nice overheads and nice feel. And I totally understand why he inserted the samples here. Uh, this is the classic case of using a sample for reinforcement and not replacement. Um, I know that there's a lot of talk out there about how people hate sample replacement. But let's not forget that they're not just there to replace bad drums. They're also there to reinforce good drums when you just want to bring out more of the power or certain frequencies that for whatever reason are not coming across in the original recording. stereo overhead um, not too much snare in it but a decent amount hi-hat and ride and I will uh, I'll say that these hi-hat rides and toms have not been cleaned and I don't know if that's because Paul does uh, automation or manual gates or whatever we'll find out when he does nail the mix I know that the original was mixed on an SSL and maybe Maybe that has something to do with uh, his workflow. So let's check out these rooms. Sounds distant. Nice and crunchy. I think you can get a lot of mileage out of these rooms if you process them correctly, especially this one. As you can hear just the way it is right now, um, just with the overhead soloed and then I bring in the room. It just adds, it just adds a little crunch and depth to it. It's nice. Basically, it's on you to mess up these drums because they sound really good right out the gate. Cool. Let's see what's going on with the bass. Looks like we have one bass 
DI tuned and one bass tuned. So I'm assuming that one is an amp and one's the DI. So let's see. Most definitely a DI. Yep, uh, sounds to me like an amp or an amp sim or something. Now, this player is not playing super hard. Um, definitely not going nuts. But then again, the dynamic of this song is not super intense either. So um, I think you'll be all right with this. It's just a matter of uh, dialing in the right low-end support for those drums. Alright, sounds way better turning down the DI some and just leaving the the amped track on. And those parts, and like that, the real challenge there, that's going to be making that sound huge. And that's what it needs. That is what it needs. All right, let's look at our rhythm guitar. So we have DIs and then three amps per guitar. So let's just hear the DI real quick. I'm assuming it's probably got to be turned up. Yep. Sounds like a DI, yay. All right, what do we got going on with these amps? We've got an Ignator, an Orange, and a Vox, so good stuff there. Nice, those are nice tones. Um, you know, you'll have to find a good blend of them, and... Uh, make it work. Now, you do have the DI, so you obviously could reamp it, and I know a lot of you guys, um, you have your favorite sims and stuff, but let me just tell you, man, these are really good amps, and these are really good amp tones. You don't get to play with this kind of stuff very often where you just get good tones provided from various real amps. I mean, sometimes we do on some of our sessions, but this particular situation is pretty unique. I would take this opportunity to learn how to balance real amps for a larger guitar tone. Sounds nice, and then let's see what these heavy rhythms are. Still, still kind of a rock tone, uh, medium gain compared to what we're used to in the metal world i wouldn't quite call that like you know over the top heavy rhythms but it is heavier than the uh the bass tracks not bass guitar but the bass uh tracks that they have here the the main rhythm guitar tracks and uh, i guess that that just is there for size we'll find out how he used this in the real mix but i can see that this would this would make for a nice blend Let's check that out. Yeah, and it just adds a nice texture and a nice layer. And again, this is a simple song, but it's all in the textures and the layers and in how big you can make it sound. So let's just listen to all the rhythm guitars, bass, and drums. Sounds sounds like Nirvana. Yeah, it's on you to make that sound like a slam and rock tune. 
cool. Let's check out these leads. All right, so luckily um, they uh, arranged this song well and this place where they have the multiple lead parts, uh, they have this delay guitar and then this octave guitar. Uh, they don't also have big rhythm guitars going on. And that's a wise arrangement choice because man, it gets tough when you start adding that many layers on top of each other. Because you've already got to find the place where uh, th these delayed out cleaner guitars and the octave guitars work against the vocals and the drums of the bass. So, you know, when you start adding super heavy guitars in there, it just swallows your mix. It's crazy. Nice, kind of sounds like you too. Nice. Very nice tones. Let's hear how these leads work with uh, the rest of the arrangement, minus the vocals. Obviously, that's out of balance and stuff, but uh, you can see that it's all about the dynamics there and getting the balance of the layers right because the sounds themselves are already pretty good. I mean, you might need to do some EQing and some compression and your basic stuff that you do, but really, um, you want to be going for the spirit or of the energy of the song and making sure that that's intact in your mix. And let me just show what happens when it switches over to a heavy guitar. Hear how it just gets bigger? Um, that is very well arranged. That's, uh, that will make it easier to mix. And I've always said that the best mixes start at the inception of the song, down with the writing, and the arrangement and that's a perfect example i mean this is a very simple tune but it's done very effectively uh no heavy guitar up until uh i guess maybe that's a chorus or something but up until the heavy part and then uh the way it comes in is just powerful uh they switch the kind of beat and everything and it just works to sound way bigger And uh, if you can see, right when it gets heavy, we have tripled vocals, which we'll get to in a second. And then on where you have none of the heavy guitars, you just have a single vocal. So the vocal arrangement is following the dynamics of the instrumental arrangement, which is wise. Let's see what we got here. So what sudden change and what this all about? I know they speak your name. All right, she's going to check out some vocals. So that's obviously the verse, and it sounds fine with just one vocal. But where sound right now? I can't stop praying you hear me play. I know that I'll be with you there someday. So why the hell's my hope? And why can't I just try? You know I've lost a lot, but I won't let this die. You know I've got this friend to be in the atmosphere. Very well arranged. Those harmonies make perfect sense when they come in. And not just the harmonies, it's uh, the intensity of the vocal performance makes sense. So again, the challenge here, you're going to have to get the energy and the balance right.
And we notice that in these two sections, it's still not really heavy. And then the heaviness comes back and the bigger layered vocals come back and that continues throughout the song. All right, guys, this has been A.L. Levy with another Nail the Mix unboxing. Happy mixing.